Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we have heard um, a lot about um, various options, various solutions today. And we have heard a lot about, um, about LNG. And um, I would like uh, now to present uh, something which um, it seems to us that uh, has been a little known or little thought, which is about, um, about LPG as a fuel solution for, for marine. But before I start, um, just a few words about uh, the, um, um, the World Energy Association, the WNPGA. We're a world association of about uh, 260 members today, covering uh, 125 uh, countries and covering the entire supply chain of uh, LPG from the source uh, to the use. We see we uh, have members, uh, the biggest probably names in the industry. And uh, what we do is uh, we get involved with all sorts of things uh, like um, um, we provide market development and support for LPG for all sectors. Uh, we create uh, good uh, industry practices. We work a lot on innovation, which is uh, part also of innovation is what I'm going to talk to you today. Um, we do outreach and advocacy. We um, we are in contact with NGO, we are in contact with ministries, and we help our countries uh, in their projects. And uh, something uh, else very important for us: we organize world forums, world congresses, uh, of course, um, um, in LPG and the regional sectors. Now, part of, uh, of our innovations uh, activity is uh, what uh, we did recently which was actually to, uh, uh, to create a report, a study, um, on the use of uh, LPG as, um, as a marine fuel. In, um, in this document, in this study, which um, I have here a copy with me, if anybody wants to have more, you can come and contact me afterwards. Um, we made an overview of um, all the marine sectors uh, today uh, to understand the technical possibilities of this fuel for, for these sectors. Um, we ranked them in terms of the potential we think that this may have. Um, uh, we went through um, gas engines in general technologies, uh, LNG engines, uh, LPG engines, and uh, we compared of course uh, our fuel with uh, all sorts of other solutions and options, and uh, particularly with, um, with LNG. We uh, uh, intended with this uh, report to inform all of stakeholders of um, um, all the development that we have in the gadget fuel market, uh, market today. Um, I know that some of you, maybe you're not very familiar with uh, LPG and some, uh, sometimes we mix it with, uh, with LNG, but just a, a few things uh, for, for the product. Uh, LPG is a mixture of uh, butane and uh, propane. We call it LPG. If you can hear it, fine. It does LPG gas uh, in the U.S. Uh, they call it uh, they call it propane. And um, another thing which uh, some of us uh, are not um, very familiar with is that this product comes globally worldwide, 60 percent from natural gas. So we can say that it is another natural gas product. 40 percent comes from the oil refining. And it has uh, practically no sulfur components, we say. We have also some other properties of LPG, but um, they are on the screen, we don't need to go through in, um, in detail. Why is LPG a good choice today as a shipping fuel? This is what we are going to talk about um, later on in, um, uh, in more details. You can hear some, you can see some, some of the reasons why, but um, I will go into more detail uh, further down. The drivers. Today, what are the drivers for LPG in city? You heard also uh, before about, um, about drivers from uh, the previous uh, speakers. Regulatory uh, uh, changes, more stringent regulations, of course. Pressure from the stakeholders uh, to manage environmental and climate uh, risks. Availability from energy sources. Fuel pricing, absolutely, of course, fuel pricing and the increasing awareness on uh, advantages of, um, uh, of new technologies. These are the drivers, particularly on the regulatory drivers that you also heard them at the uh, first part uh, this morning, of course the SOCs, of course the SOCs, um, of course the, uh, the, the limit going down to 0.5 from, uh, from 2020, 
uh, the restrictions from budget fields to be carried probably from, uh, from 2020. Um, NOx, CO2, also is once to come, CO2. So all these are regulatory drivers that uh, really drive this, uh, this change to alternative solutions and, um, and fuels. Why LPG? The environmental benefits, you can see them up on the slide. Conversion from, uh, from fuel oil would give us about 90% down SOX emissions, 20% uh, down on CO2 and so on NOxes, and it's uh, almost 90% down on particular matter. So um, really these uh, this limits make LPG today as a really very attractive fuel we believe to the shipping industry and uh, even more maybe an ideal compliant solution at least we think. The options, what are the options? I mean, we heard about the options also earlier today. You can see them also up on, up on the screen. Uh, we have an MGO with a lot of fuels, scrubbers, alternative fuels. We will concentrate more on the LNG. On the LPG. And uh, we will see here, this is what, um, what Astomos has, uh, has put together comparing four of these uh, options. Our option on the, on the usage of LPG, of course, Highly ecological, low maintenance costs, uh, existing supply chains everywhere. I talked about uh, before about the infrastructure that we find everywhere. We don't need to recreate infrastructure, or at least we create, need to create little additional infrastructure, not a lot. And installation costs uh, lower than LNG. So there, are, there are many reasons why we think that uh, LPG it is, um, it is an ideal solution, a very good solution for, for today. You can see more up here, always coming from, uh, from Astomos, Astomos in the review they have done. Standardized quality, easy, affordable, uh, infrastructure I mentioned before. Uh, we can carry it as uh, pressurized or refrigerated. And uh, very important, accessible open market and contractual flexibility. If you need to get today LPG, there are so many supplies of LPG, so many companies market which they can supply you with LPG. So it's an open market, you can negotiate contracts and everything. There are many questions about uh, is there enough LPG? And what if, if there is not enough LPG? Yes, there is very much LPG. LPG is, is in surplus today. Um, we had uh, around 360 million tons in 2016 and we are seeing uh, this going to around 360 in uh, 2027. Of course, you see that uh, the market, the first market today with the shale gas, it is um, it's USA. Uh, China is coming um, uh, close behind. We have third Saudi Arabia. Uh, but very important, in these numbers, we have not taken into account the product which will be coming from Iran which can be significant, and also additional product from Iraq. So yes, there is a lot of product around. But what about the other very important thing? What about uh, where, where we find this product? I mean, bunkering, where, where is this product? Well, we have so many, so many places, bunkering, potential bunkering points today. More than uh, more than 1,000 can become bunkering points. And, uh, and additionally, um, also uh, floating vessels can uh, play this role. In comparison with, um, with LNG, for example, you can see also in this table, around 1,000, maybe at, uh, around 300, we think of LNG. So infrastructure is very much in place to supply you with, um, with LPG. How, you know, three other ways, you can either go, um, you can either go uh, short, um, uh, short ship with uh, uh, existing terminals and storage, uh, ship to ship, of course, with the factory ships, uh, uh, ships and barges, or you can also go uh, truck to ship, as I was mentioning, I think, uh, earlier to, uh, today. If someone wants uh, some product uh, tomorrow for, uh, for a boat to, to move here on the side, uh, well, there is a, a truck which will come tomorrow morning and supply it. So this is available. Um, truck to ship can be done tomorrow. On technologies, again, on technologies, we have uh, three main uh, engines. Uh, we have uh, two-stroke engines, you know, the MIN engines. We have the four-stroke of Varchila. And we also have uh, turbines from General Electric, and you will see later on where these are being used, will be used. 
from this um, uh, from these engines, uh, maybe you know that uh, the the MIN and MIN uh, MIN engine uh, will be used uh, in the XMAR uh, XMAR new bits, which are now in now uh, in three bits being uh, being used. So on cost basis, very important. LPG has shorter payback tickets. And we will see that um, also uh, later on the graph. We have lower investment costs. It costs less LPG than LNG comparable. The LPG terminals also they cost less. If we need to build more, less investment. Cost savings we will have the fuel. For retrofit solutions, again, it is easier the LPG solution than the LNG solution. And uh, of course, with those carriers which uh, carry uh, LPG, well, it is a no-brainer. You know, it savings both uh, time and fees. This is what I was referring to uh, before. This is an example from um, from DNB, from I don't know how many of you have seen the recent paper from uh, 2017. This example gives us uh, relative um, uh, costs, uh, incremental investment costs. Uh, so we can see the costs of uh, uh, LNG compared to, uh, to the LPG and um, the other solutions. And what does this bring us? This brings us um, things like this. So you see on the, on the left graph, for example, that uh, payback time for um, uh, an LPG solution it is the lowest of, um, uh, of, of the options. On pricing, very important on pricing. People say, yes, LPG, uh, yeah, it's good, but LPG is expensive. Well, LPG was expensive. Not anymore. With so much LPG around, such a surplus everywhere, and more coming in, it's not expensive anymore. It's here, you can see here on the graph, at the end of the graph, the LPG is at the same level of uh, price as, um, um, as LNG. So, well, where have all these things uh, uh, led us? Uh, what's happening today? You can see that XMAR uh, is building two new uh, to new VLGCs uh, in, um, uh, in Philippines, which will be ready by uh, Q3 uh, 2020. And ABS is working uh, with Doi and LPG on retrofitting their existing uh, VLGCs. Uh, probably one of these days or soon, uh, we expect that uh, something will be announced again in the same line as um, XMA. Uh, we, uh, uh, we have a Korean uh, ferry, which is being built at the moment, with General Electric engines. Um, for uh, 2009, this one. Um, we have uh, the association of uh, LPG from uh, from Korea on um, on LPG bunkering uh, hub in uh, in Busan. We have the project of um, LP Green. Many of you may have um, may have seen it. It is the association of uh, the LPGL with um, um, with Wachila. And uh, we have also Kawasaki and Mitsubishi working on the same lines uh, for, uh, for Astros. So we see that, yes, ships now are being built or about to be built with uh, LNG and fueled, um, fueled engines. And this is now the reality. So the benefits in a nutshell, um, excellent clean handling properties, low emissions, uh, the LPG market is there, the infrastructure is here. Installation costs are lower than, uh, than LNG, very attractive paybacks. It's a non cryogenic technology, so much simpler to maintain, much simpler to train the people to use it. Um, lower maintenance uh, management costs than the LPG, and of course we said, uh, save banking time we said for the LPG or tankers, for the LPG tankers. So, Everything that uh, really differentiates, makes a difference uh, for, uh, for LPG, you can find it on, uh, on a brochure that uh, we, uh, we created uh, recently, this one here. And it is available on, um, um, on the desk uh, over there if you wish to, to pick one. You will see all the key points that I've been mentioning. They are also on our roll-up uh, panel here. Um, and to finish, yes, we think that LPG it is at least as attractive as LNG today. Um, also, following uh, what I've heard, uh, what we've heard this morning, 
it is very, very important to communicate everything about the LPG because I believe that the industry does not know yet sufficiently enough about the LPG as much as they know about the other solutions. So communicate information is key to develop the LPG industry. And so whatever you would like to know is available on the WPGA web, uh, website. So yes, we believe uh, LPG is uh, here, it's open in new ways, and it is really a credible solution for the future for the marine shipping industry. So thank you very much.